So the main thesis point of this video is labbing and field testing. We probably all agree that learning and improving as artists is not a one and done thing. A good artist doesn't become a great artist in one fell swoop. So there's actually two points off of that that I think that we can learn. When it comes to art fundamentals, uh, anatomy, construction, perspective, they are not subjects that we just learn once because they're basic and then move on. In fact, the complexity of art fundamentals might be daunting to some folks because they feel like they have to master them immediately. But I will posit that it actually works in a different way. I think that when we seek out to learn and improve, we do studies and try to grasp these fundamentals. We learn just a little bit. We fill up our mental bucket to what it can understand based on where we are, and then our next few drawings are much better than they were before, and then we repeat. So for someone that's only drawn flat shapes before, improving their construction might mean just drawing a 3D cube for the first time. For someone more intermediate, that might mean turning that shape or more complex shapes in space or perspective. Or for someone else, how to use those shapes and successfully render planes or surfaces when painting them. There's another aspect of this that becomes true when we start to look at learning in this kind of stair-stepping cyclical loop and it has everything to do with draw overs. We're going to use some recent critiques from over on Patreon as our examples for this video. Two very quick things. For one, this coming weekend, we will be doing another virtual booth stream, this time both on Twitch and here on YouTube. Friday morning, September the 11th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, we'll be streaming, and then Sunday night, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern will be streaming, and all weekend we're doing a giveaway and a sale over on brookseggleston.com shop, and we'll announce the winner on Sunday night. Second quick thing is that there's a new Biko's backpack, this time featuring Glengore, everyone's favorite giant frenemy crab, and as a bonus, as a thanks for the very warm reception of Tay in her last few videos and the launch of her book Writing Complete Characters last week, we are including as an extra a story hearth bookmark complete with a little tassel. You can grab all of that at the Biko's Backpack tier on Patreon this month. So labbing and field testing. Labbing would be taking our portable solar panel through a series of tests in the lab to establish, hey, in ideal conditions, I think our solar panel could power a camping grill or microwave or something. Field testing would mean taking that solar panel out camping and see if it will practically power a microwave the way that we hoped. Something isn't quite right, we make a revision, and the cycle starts over. So labbing and field testing is, first of all, taking our uh, time to lab those fundamental ideas, right? The fundamentals of art, figuring out, doing studies uh, in a sterile environment, improving our understanding of them. And then field testing would be taking them and making the art that we want to make. We don't spend all of our time just studying. We like and enjoy making new things and fulfilling our creative ideas but this sort of cycle is going to help us to not stagnate and continue to improve. And that's something I kind of want to take into these uh, drawings and draw overs, the examples from our Patreon critiques this week. Boom, quality change. So as we go into these draw overs, these examples from critiques, the idea of the draw overs is not that I've spent a lot of time uh, on these drawings or been really thorough with uh, executing, sketching, rendering uh, over top of folks' drawings. Uh, it's not because I understand, say, Sam's characters super well. This is the first time that I've seen them, and maybe there are little things that I'm interpreting a different way than he intended for them to look. Um, but this is actually just me pulling on those things that I've labbed, those studies, the things that I've gotten uh, down and done enough studies on that they're sort of inherent and I understand them. And when I see something that doesn't look like that, my first instinct is to change or correct or fix or skew so that it fits those parameters. Here's an example of that. With this first drawing, we have a little bit of a difference in perspective with the image that we see we aren't super sure what the character is sitting on, right? It might be sort of like a couch uh, or seat, but because it's a kind of flat shape, we have uh, things like this line here uh, intersecting over top of the shoe. We aren't quite getting what we would hope for, right? But here is a, uh, the first thing that I did was decide, okay, we're going to take this character, we're gonna sit him just on the ground, right? Uh, we're gonna take the walls that are behind him 
and give ourselves a proper uh, corner of a room or alleyway uh, in perspective. The next thing that I do here is just a quick, not sure what that line is there, uh, we're doing a, a quick sketch of the head over top. And from that, uh, I'm deciding, okay, we're gonna point uh, our character in this direction, the direction that our arrow is facing. So we're looking at the head in a three quarter view. And then I'm taking this head that I'm just basing off of some basic 3D geometry of what a head is like for a human or a humanoid character and drawing it that way. We have a, a basic structure for the skull and things like that. Again, I don't have a great understanding of their character, but this is just some standard things. Next, uh, I'm just going to put down what I understand from doing gesture studies, of doing anatomy studies, uh, a basic structure, maybe not 100%, fairly quick, of what it would look like for this character to be sitting there and having their arms kind of in a similar position, their legs in a similar position to what they were in the original image. But we want it to make sense, we want it to look right in perspective, and we want it to be sort of natural, right? So the arms are resting across the knees. And as you can see here, over the course of his critique, I'm thinking, you know, we have a little bit of leeway there for this leg. Uh, maybe we want to see a little bit more of like the back or top part of the leg as it flows up into the body, right? But that's a, a general starting place for us to go. These are just the fundamentals. And then super boring, right? Probably not the style that Sam is going for, for a face, very plain. But at least on this level, now we can start to graft uh, those extra details on top of our character. The great thing is that when you start with these 3D building blocks, you can either carve them, combine them, and use them as guides for symmetrical placement of things like facial features or anything sort of flat. We do the same here where we see a character whose torso is kind of facing us, his head is facing away. We want to do a little bit with the arms and shoulders. Forgive a few of my little pencil marks there, right? So let's bring up Again, very quick structural changes. This isn't about changing Sam's style or anything like that. Where we've now moved the, the uh, arm there into the background a little bit more. We've restructured the head a little bit so that it, it's got dimensionality to it, so that it's there's a, a, a spacing and placement for some of those features, and uh, a little bit, you know, of a restructuring for the the torso. Same over here with this character. Again. Not really trying to change anything, but we could swap out some of those uh, 2D elements, right, or those small details very quickly. Uh, the change here is in that structure, right? We're uh, changing a little bit of the arm positioning for something that reads for a better, uh, with a better silhouette. Uh, we have some motion of the shoulders overall, and we're positioning those things in three quarters. So Rosin, or Quingen here, has a ton of drawings of really adorable looking rabbits and hare characters. Uh, we, she's also got some fan art of my character Parcel here, which is greatly appreciated. Here's again using those same principles, and this will have nothing to do with the fact that I'm familiar with uh, drawing Parcel, right? I'm not doing big changes on here's the correct way to draw her based on my style guide, right? This is just about uh, using those 3D shapes like we have here, uh, to maybe course correct and improve the symmetry of the features of the face. Here we have on our rabbit character, um, it's nice and tight around the, uh, the left side of the face here, uh, as far as, as we're concerned. But then as for, once the symmetry drifts over in this direction, we get a little bit of like a, a drag of the eye off symmetry, right? But with our, um, with our 3D structure of this head, a very simple and basic one. It's not very complex to do a cartoon rabbit head, right? But we're able to place that eye in a just slightly better spot so that we get a better read of appeal off of them. Uh, the same thing with parcel here, right? We're going to fix both the uh, size of the nose, the, the thickness of it, and using the nose not as just a, a flat plane on the, on the face, but as a three-dimensional box, basically. When you break down the nose, it essentially becomes a box. And you'll see here a lot of the shapes that I've started with aren't, you know, what I know about Parcel, right? Uh, I think it's interesting that I used this character to sort of improve my knowledge of drawing humans, and now it's kind of uh, moving forward with someone else, which is pretty cool. 
So I'm built a spherical head here. Uh, there's planes of the face coming down. There's a, a place that we are cutting, right? So we're, we're looking at the plane of the face here as this, this is sort of a flat box. And then if we looked at, at it like a box in, uh, in three quarter view, this would be another side of it, right? So those aren't necessarily flat elements. And now immediately we now see, we can pull uh, this eye again, which is a little bit off center. It's a, it might be a tendency for this artist. I've had uh, my own sort of idiosyncrasies with, with uh, tendencies to do things like that, where uh, I'll draw an eye like um, the far eye here, a little bit shorter and smaller than the one on, on, uh, that's closer to us, right? It's almost like it's veering into perspective, but when something is that close, we actually only change the thickness of it and not the width of it like that. So they would be this, the same height. So this might be something for this artist to look out for, but what we've done is we've pulled it back into a place where it, where it fits. It's no longer drifting to the side of the face. It's symmetrical with the other one. And then the only stylistic thing that I thought this was pretty funny, um, for someone who draws all of these adorable rabbit characters, she gave Parcel really straight teeth. And Parcel definitely has a little bit of a, a rabbity buck tooth to her. So you might be saying, well, Bricks, I don't have access to a critiquing system or, or some kind of feedback like that. I'd like to be able to improve myself. Well, here's the thing that I think might help. If you take some of the principles and ideas that you've learned through studies recently, eating sort of your vegetables and learning things, even though it might not be the fun, cool, creative thing that you want to be drawing, and then take those skills to maybe a drawing that's six months or a year old, and then trace over top of it like this. Do your own draw over and see what things that you would do differently. Don't try to be a slave to the, the lines that are existing underneath. Try and break things down to very simple shapes and see what happens. And I think what might happen is you'll realize what things need to be done through your field testing, what things need to carry your study through to the actual products. Here's a bonus idea, not necessarily about drawing over, but about uh, understanding color and rendering and shading and realizing your character through some kind of finished style. And we have here uh, another Sam's work. And while it, is, it looks nice how it is, and it's fulfilling a sort of like Ken Sugimori, um, there's a certain uh, style that you might find, say, in, in anime or in uh, RPG uh, promotional artwork, right? Where you have this sort of washed watercolor feel. Here's just an idea of what I did building up the steps, kind of like I did in that other drawing there. So I start out with a very basic green and red that's a little bit uh, stronger in saturation. By the way, Sam is trying, is hoping to, to learn a little bit more about rendering, right? So this is not necessarily a style thing, but it's just uh, learning to build up with light through some normal colors and paint overs and things in a more analog way than just using a lot of blending layers, even though that's what I eventually add on top of this. Um, my green here is, looks very messy, right? Because I don't have access to his original art files. It's just drawing over, so there's a lot of mess to it, right? But uh, what I initially do here is, considering that our light source is coming from that uh, upper left, right? We're, we're casting light down. We first of all see some light hit the brim of the hat overall, casts a shadow down to that sort of poncho region past the hat, and then some light on the leg area and stuff like that. Then from there, we understand, you know, what areas are kind of darker shadow, right? We add this in, which is a little bit subtle. We have a little bit of ambient occlusion, the shadows between two objects, right? And then over top of that, we have an overlay layer for that brown to just bring out some richer color to it and uh, just some, some cleanup and fixes for this, as well as a, a little bit of a multiply layer to, to heighten the, the depth of that shadow. So even though this artist might not be going for this particular style of rendering in their work, it's still a helpful study to do. It gives you things like what color uh, is my light and what color is my shadow? What kind of planes is the light interacting with on top of this character? That's something that goes back to the dimensionality, the 3D shapes that your character is made up of. Let's just bring Glangor up there from this month's backpack. Hope you guys can make it to our virtual booth this Friday morning and Sunday evening here on YouTube and on Twitch. We'll be doing a 
ton of live drawing, question answering, hang out and have a good time. And also all weekend long is a sale at brookseggleston.com slash shop and a giveaway that we'll talk about on Friday morning. You can get Tay's new book, Writing Complete Characters, again, at brookseggleston.com slash shop and at learncharacterdesign.com. You can get my new completely remade course, Learn Character Design. It's a comprehensive character design curriculum that can take you from not even knowing how to draw to someone who can make characters that people care about. Thank you for tuning in this week to this video, and also I wanted to say thank you for the reception of my previous video that was called something like, uh, let's let's do things a little different. That's uh, a little bit more of a laid back approach, a little bit more behind the scenes, and just kind of going through my process and the things that I'm dealing with as a freelance artist and character designer. We'll, uh, we'll revisit that format. You can keep up with me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, and we'll, uh, we'll be back with more videos here on Character Design Forge. See you guys Friday morning. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating.